of this land has given us our home. Many people helped make this possible and it would not have happened at all without an entire network of people pitching in wherever they could, whether it was finding an old picture in the attic that we could go by or uh, digging into their pockets to help raise the money to make it happen. Part of the money from the chair auction today will go to our next mural. And if you like this one, just wait. The next one's gonna be even better. So please get a bid number from Sadie Flukas. And before you leave here today, look at the chairs, make bids, make high bids. Because we need to make a big mural. At this time, I'd like to introduce our mayor, a certificate she would like to pass out to various folks. Good afternoon. I was telling Ms. Steele earlier we couldn't have chosen a better day. It's so pretty and cool out here. And I put to show our appreciation from the town of Homer and from the office of the mayor and Ms. Cynthia Steele, we have certificates to provide for those who help participate in making this a success. Uh, the first certificate of appreciation, I will read the first one and the others I'll just mention the name. Presented to Judy Peterson Buckner with gratitude for your contribution to the creation of the High Cotton, the Kennedy Mural Project, a tribute to our forebearers who, whose stewardship of the land has given us our home. Presented this 26th day of May, 2012, Alicia Nicole Smith, Mayor of Homer, and Cynthia Gladney Steele, coordinator of the Claiborne Jubilee. Ms. Buckner. Homer Industrial Development Board is a representative from that board here. Mr. Ed Watson. The Ford Museum is Valentine. Port Regionals Art Council. Jim and Dalton Ross. Chamber of Commerce. Yeah. Hannah Bustamante. Did I get it right? Waters. Whitney Trisler. Hillary Clary. Okay. <laughs> Daniel Moore. Oh. 
And last but not least, Nicholas Bustamante. I spoke for Oh, you didn't get it. <laughs> like we spoke earlier, we were so inspired and so grateful for that painting um, on the side of the building. As most of my children say, who's painting on the side of the building? Then they asked me one day, well, who's painting in the rain on the side of the building? <laughs> so we were by City Hall. We passed by frequently and we admired we admired the artwork, and we're so grateful that you chose Boma. Would you like to speak at this time? Please. All right, so I got some stuff written down. Hopefully I can get through it. Um, so it's uh, I'm getting all choked up already. <laughs> this is uh, just a really, really big deal for us to be part of this. Um, so the thing that impressed me most about Homer is your dedication to honoring the past. Uh, when I first came out here, uh, I met with Cynthia Steele and she took me on a tour at the museum over here. And I was just absolutely impressed and taken back by her connection to the people in the photograph. She had a story behind everything in there and could say, you know, my family was part of this, or these are people that I know, or the person that you saw that we met earlier, this is their great great grandmother or great grandfather. Um, and to be honest with you, I was a little jealous uh, because coming from and being born and raised in Southern California, I just don't have that kind of a connection to the place. Um, so your, your past is, is, is tangible, and you guys are so lucky to live in a place with such a rich history. And I just want to thank you guys for letting us be part, a very small part of that history, so thank you. Um, I guess let's go with the people that made this awesome thing happen. Uh, so first I want to acknowledge Judy Buckner who did a wonderful job with the design, who designed the mural for us and was just amazing to work with, to, to be able, besides actually doing that first original design of the mural, she came out this last week in the heat and helped us finish it up. Um, and it was just a great honor to, to be working next to you on that wall, so thank you. The next person. The next person I want to talk about is Cynthia Steele. Cynthia, you're uh, truly an artistic visionary and dreamer. Without her vision of this mural, it would have never happened. Um, this mural was created on one-fifth of a realistic budget of a mural, which is nothing. And the great thing about dreams is they're contagious. So once she got into motion, everybody started to chip in and volunteer and really bring what they needed to to the table for this to happen. So, thank you very much. A few of the people that donated um, their services and donated supplies, um, and I'm gonna miss some people on here. Uh, the first is Eminem Sound and Media, who are located out of Alexandria, who lent us extension cords, and uh, light fixtures, all kinds of the things that I didn't think about having to work on on a big project like this. Also, have come out here multiple times and is videoing this, this presentation right now uh, to document the process. Uh, Fine Line Art Supply in Ruston generously donated um, copies of the original painting for us to work from. Uh, Jamie Johnson, who is a grad student, came out here and also documented the piece. Mr. Ross, who so graciously helped us get the building into a condition that was we were able to paint on it, so thank you for that. Uh, Seth and his crew, who uh, donated a bunch of supplies and really just helped us out, out there. And of course, all of you who dropped off lunches and cookies, we thank you very, very much. All right. 
right, so now, now the students. These guys. So when, again, when Cynthia first asked me to do this project, I had no realistic, artists don't tend to be really good at math. So she said the size of the building, and I said, yeah, I'd be interested in doing that. Didn't click how big the building was. And didn't click on how darn crazy that textured surface was going to be and what I was in for, right? So after looking at the, the museum in there, and then going over and looking at the building, I said, oh, I'm in for it now. So I went and talked to Jonathan Donahue, who is the director of the School of Art, and he um, was very supportive of, of this adventure and allowed me to um, ask some students to take on this project with me and tackle it in the form of a directed studies course. So that's how this kind of came about. This built the building. And I encourage you guys all to get up close to it and rub your hands across it. That surface was the most challenging surface I've ever painted on in my entire life. I had no idea even how to start tackling this thing. So when I got the students out there, we were instantly in the trenches together. We were trying to figure it out. I was learning while they were learning. And I think every inch of that wall has been painted two or three times. So keep that in mind when you're looking at it, that a lot of, a lot of hard work. The, uh, so as part of the, uh, the agreement to work on the course study, it was basically they signed a contract with me that said, okay, for five hours a week, you guys would come out and help me out with the mural, and that would, that would you'd get a grade at the end of the quarter. Well, after the first week, every one of them asked, is it okay if we come out an extra day? And from that moment on, Everybody came out two or three days a week, um, which says says a lot for students that have no connection to the town of Homer before coming out here and working on the mural. Quickly, as we started working on it, we, we realized that this was something that was so much bigger than ourselves. And we took it very, very seriously, and they worked their tails off for you guys. So um, it was incredible to work with you guys, and I wrote down a few things, so bear with me. I won't, I'll try not to get choked up again. Um, examples of it's saying so that, that it's incredible to work with somebody and saying that, that they worked really hard is one thing, but I have some concrete examples, some tangible examples of, of why I feel you know, that this, this merits that declaration. So the first time it rained on us, we uh, we're outside, you know, everybody drove, drives at least a half hour. Whitney drives over an hour one way to get here each time she comes out. Dedication, right? So we're out here, it starts to rain. We'll I'll run inside the building and I say, okay, it looks like it's just not in the cards for us, guys. I think we gotta pack up and, and head home. They weren't having it. They said, no, let's just wait it out. Waited 15, 20 minutes, nope, still raining. Quickly, one of them said, I got a poncho in my car, and I kid you not, she went and got her poncho. The other one said we could climb underneath the scaffolding, and we went out and we, we, we painted on that mural for two or three more hours during that day. The, um, another example of this is just um, the amount of, well, I talked about how long the drive was for them, but that each, we're talking about college students here, that they would need to get out, leave their house by 6.30 or 7 in the morning, get out here by 8 o'clock in the morning and start working on this, work way into the hot afternoons, get up and do it again the next day, you know? And if that all that wasn't enough to, to, to prove my point, that the class that they signed up for ended a week and a half ago. And these guys have been up here every single day since then, spending their first week of summer vacation finishing this mural for this town of Homer. So. I just want to end talking to my crew that it's been a real honor, and I'm extremely proud of you guys. So thank you. It's just been wonderful to have Nick as a colleague in this project and to have somebody who is excited about the same things you're excited about 
is a rare treasure, and I, I really appreciate it. You too can have this picture in your home. We are selling a limited edition uh, of numbered signed prints of the mural, and examples are available over here. In fact, the original painting from which the mural was taken is over here. And we're going to get the artists to come and line up and hold that picture so that the newspaper can get a, a photograph of that. And then I want you to come over and uh, check out the size you want. You might have to build a new room for that big one. So, uh, and don't forget about the chairs. I really would like to take a, one more minute to thank the Ross family. When I first talked to Mr. Ross's mother, Beverly Kennebrew, several years ago, she was excited about the idea, but nothing happened. And then one day, she was no longer with us. And so, I talked to her husband. And before I knew it, he was gone. And then I had the nerve to call Jim and say, now this was their dream, let's do it. And he not only let us do it, he completely transformed the building that, well, to be frank, was about the ugliest building in town. <laughs> and it looks good even if there weren't a mural on it. And so we thank you. The building was built by Mr. Anna, Alabama Kennebrew and upstairs was um, Mr. Guy Kennebrew's off law offices, and I think you've read in the paper a number of other businesses have been housed in there. But it started as the Opera House, the Kennebrew Opera House, and show, Mr. Alabama would bring up shows from New Orleans, and it was quite the big deal. So, we read in the Claiborne Parish history books about how people would get dressed up just to come to the Opera House. Thank you so much. You've been a wonderful, wonderful support and your family's many gifts to the parish over the years continue. I appreciate it.